Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bar habitatillah <clears throat> This is a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which refers to the reasons for that people attain or achieve happiness in this life as well as the hereafter and we're always making the dua Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar O Allah Please bless us with goodness in this life, as well as the hereafter, and protect us from the hellfire. Listen to this beautiful hadith as explained by Sheikh Saleh Sidlan, Rahmatul Alayhi, Rahmatul Wasia. Uh, and it's a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, showing us and illustrating for us and encouraging us to attain certain attributes and certain uh, relationships that will help us to have happiness in this life as well as, as hereafter. Listen to this beautiful hadith. An Ibn Abbas radi Allahu ta'ala anhu qala qala nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arba'un min u'tiyannahunna faqad u'tiya khayr ad-dunya wal akhirah lisanun dhakirun wa qalbun shakirun wa badanun ala bala'i sabirun وَزَوْجَةٌ لَا تَبْغِيهِ خَوْنٍ فِي نَفْسِهَا وَلَا مَالِهِ And this is a sahih, a jami' a sagheer. In this sound hadith, that's in a sahih, jami' a sagheer. Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه report said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, for Basically, for people that if they're given these things, then they're given the good in this life as well as the hereafter. He said, a tongue, a mindful tongue, a heart that is thankful, a body that is patient when it is tested, and a wife that does not uh, deceive him with regards to herself or, uh, you know, by denying him or uh, his wealth. She safeguards his wealth. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these four beneficial things that will benefit us in this life as well as the hereafter, and may Allah bless us with all of them. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. He mentioned the first thing. He said, lisan a dhakir He said, the, the tongue, uh, the mindful tongue. He said, that from the, the Shaykh mentioned, from the uh, provisions of Allah is a tongue that is uh, vacuid in here, meaning mindful in remembering uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's always mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dhikr, mentioning uh, his Lord all the time. And that always busy with ibadah, seeking the pleasure of Allah and gaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being far away from speaking about those things which will cause him to be humiliated by his Lord and displeasure of his Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses this person with his mercy. So then this person is happy in this life as well as the hereafter. May Allah bless us to be from them. I mean. Then he mentioned the second one, Qalbin Shakirin, the heart which is thankful. And he said that this uh, this thankful, grateful heart is from the blessings, from amongst the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his servants. That if a servant knows about the blessing of Allah upon him and he's grateful and thankful and he does not reject or deny the blessings in favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase him. And this is uh, found to be the case as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the, in the ayah, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ibrahim that uh, and if you are grateful or thankful, then we will increase you. And if you, uh, you know, are denying our favors, you know, rejecting our, our ni'mah, our blessings, then my punishment is severe. The third characteristic the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith, he said, Al-Badan al-Sabr al al bala And this is the body which is patient, you know, being patient when you're tested with your health. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, and that this patience means that a person is patient with the decree of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Khayri wa shar, the good and the bad of it. The, the, the sweetness and the sourness of it. And when they receive ni'mah and blessings, and when they uh, are denied those pleasures, that they are pleased with the decree of Allah and they are accepting and not going to disobedience when they have this. And they are not indulging in sinfulness, but rather they are uh, inclining because of their comforted heart in Iman, they're inclining towards righteousness. So this person is, is patient upon the tests that they receive in their, you know, the, the physical tests and, and all the tests, the spiritual, mental, and all those tests. The fourth uh, thing the Sheikh mentions in explaining this hadith, he mentions a zawja, a saliha, a righteous, uh, a righteous wife, a righteous spouse. He said that this is also from the reasons that a person receives happiness in this life as well as the hereafter. And that a righteous wife is free from ghibah and backbiting. She covers him, you know, helps the husband to be obedient by uh, seeking to please him physically, mentally, and spiritually. She advises him when he has made mistakes or sins. And she is a safety. Uh, she safeguards herself, you know, meaning that she stays away from the Muharramat and keeps herself reserved for her husband uh, during times of fitna and times of, of course, regular times. And he said that this is the pleasure and happiness of a husband in this life and also the happiness for the hereafter and that in, in the way that this wife may be his wife in uh, in Jannah, and so those, if we see the hal or the condition of many people, we'll find that people who have discord in their home, that they have uh, a, a wife that is disobedient or a wife that is um, some uh, a, an evil wife, for example, that she brings out the evil in the person, that the person is is, un, is displeased. The person is is miserable in his all of his life if he doesn't have a comforting wife. But the one who is comforted by his wife and spouse, and likewise even the man comforting his wife, then the, then his or her life is you can see the sa'ada, you can see the pleasure, you can see the, the happiness on them because they have a righteous person backing them up. Or for the man who has more than one wife, more than one wife, he has righteous wives backing him up, helping him to be better, helping him to be stronger and more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, advising him, strengthening him, being a sutra for him to protect him from the muharramat and comforting his heart and keeping his home and his possessions uh, safeguarded. And likewise, he is the comfort for them. So this is sa'ada fi dunya wal akhirah. And may Allah bless us with all of that. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Then the Shaykh mentions some benefits we gain from this hadith. He said, this hadith shows us the fadl, the, the, the greatness of Allah, the Almighty, and His generosity uh, regarding His servants. And, that it is, and His mercy is so wide and vast. 
and his gentleness with, with us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the greatness of being patient when you are tested with some harm or trial. Another benefit, a third benefit of this hadith is it shows us the importance of being consistent in our remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Allah often, making that on your tongue, being obedient to Allah often, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. Uh, uh, another benefit of this uh, hadith that the Shaykh mentions, rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiyah, he mentioned is the benefit or the greatness of being uh, uh, grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his ni'am upon you, his blessings. You have your health. You have so much to be grateful for. The idnillah. And the last benefit he mentioned is the greatness and the benefit of having a righteous wife that helps to, that protects her or preserves herself and protects him and protects his wealth and uh, helps him to be away from ghibah and backbiting and all the kind of shar and evil that's out in this world. And we ask all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm and nafiras and tayyibu amana mutakabina and bless us with those beautiful attributes that Allah, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.